Welcome back everyone to another episode of Azure Masterclass. I'm Connor and today we're going to be covering more virtual networking and some of the nuances that you can run into with DNS to make sure it's set up correctly. So let's get straight into that. The first thing that we're going to be doing is setting a static IP on a NIC for a virtual machine that we've built. If you go into your virtual machine and click on the networking tab, you can see that your network interface is linked here. You can also search for network interfaces along the top, but this is just a nice, easy way to get to the right one. If you click on that, then you can see you've got IP configuration under your settings, and you can see that by default, it's assigned a dynamic IP, which will be the first available because it was the first VM in that subnet. If we edit the IP configuration, I'm not entirely sure why the colors a little messed up. Maybe it's because I'm using dark mode and I should be using the classic white and blue. <laughs> I like to keep the traditional white and blue. It's one of the only things that I do not use in dark mode. But, you know, we only do dark theme here. Uh, we can set it just to static here and leave it on the same IP just to make sure that nothing changes there and save that. That should only take a second or two. Da -da 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 -da. It's taking longer than a second. Okay, that's updated. So now if we're to refresh the page, we'll see that that's a static IP address, which is what we wanted. The next thing that we're gonna to look to do is connect to the virtual machine so that you can see the settings prior to any changes that we're gonna be making. So we'll do that via Bastion. And um, you can see that the connection settings are already here and I should be able to just log in with the password that we've set previously. Enjoy, enjoy logging in. You guys are gonna enjoy all this waiting time, aren't you? Okay, once your Bastion session has connected, you should be able to show an IP config and you'll see that by default, it has the Azure DNS servers. Because we're gonna to wanna to domain join this machine, we want to change the DNS and it's best to get that done on your VNet level. So if we go to a virtual network and we go to the hub, where this VM is, then you can see that there are DNS servers within the settings. By default, obviously it's the usual provided, but if we go into custom here and set that to the IP of the uh, AD server that we've built and save that, then once that's been applied, which you can see only took a couple of seconds, we can now restart the virtual machine and that will update the DNS for us. So the two affected VMs are these, so I'll just restart both of them. And that should only take a couple of minutes. I feel like I need to get a, like a pillow in here. Yeah, like a stand-up bed. Every time I deploy something, I always walk over and... <laughs> okay, both of them VMs have been restarted and both say they're now running. So we should be able to connect on to start test again via our Bastion session. I'm just kidding because it's not restarted. <laughs> <laughs> what I'll do is I'll close that down and just reconnect it again, just to be safe. Right, now that that's restarted, you should be able to use Bastion to log on to the server again. So if we just log on with the same account, that should open up the session. And if we do an IP config in here now, we should see that the DNS servers have updated to the AD server from earlier. So you can see that's now 10, 10, 0, 10, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we should be able to resolve start.local and you can see it is coming back with that address. So if we look to domain join this machine, which I'm sure you've all done before, and we're welcome to the domain, nice and easy. We'll give that VM another restart. And while we're here, we can now connect via Bastion to that AD server as well. So this is on the domain, which means we can connect using a domain account. Okay, now that start test has successfully domain joined, we should be able to ping it from the AD and that should resolve the correct IP. So if we ping start test or one, and we can see that it is resolving to the static IP that we set it to earlier. Then to make sure that your virtual networks have access to your private DNS zone, you need to add a virtual network link, which you can see under settings. You can see we've already got one here for the hub virtual network, which is where them VMs are currently situated. And that will grant them access to the zone so that they can read from it, provided they've got access to Azure's DNS. If you needed another virtual network to have access, it's very simple. You just add it in. We'll just call this one start court prod link. And then from there, you can just select the virtual network that you want and very simply just create it. That should only take a few seconds and that will give that virtual network access. So now if we look to configure DNS on the domain, we should be able to get access to these zones. The next thing that we want to do is try and resolve some items in the private DNS zone within Azure. To follow best practice, there's quite a few steps to get there, but we'll run through them with you now. Let's go into the DNS private zone and you can see that we've got a couple of test records in here that are on 10.20.0.101 and 10.20.0.102. So if we try and resolve them now, we'll see that it won't actually find anything in that. So if we do this, you'll see that a ping request couldn't find the host. 
So we need to check and try again. The way to get around that is by configuring your DNS forwarders as Azure DNS. So if we go into the forwarders here and edit this, the IP address should be this and apply that. What we should see is within a couple of minutes, we're now able to resolve items in that private link and that should spread across the domain without any need for adding additional zones or a private DNS resolver, which, you know, costs quite a bit of money. And um, this is an easy way to get around it and follows good practice as well. So you can see now if we ping it, it's actually already resolved into the correct IP. Just doing an S lookup on that as well. You can see that is resolving correctly without me having to make any changes in DNS and make a new forward lookup zone or anything like that. Just to show you that the other one's working as well. And you can see that they are resolving to the correct IPs. Got another VM in the domain, so we'll quickly just run over to that, open up command prompt and ping the same thing. You can see that's already resolving the correct IP. Again, NS lookup on that. And the same for test two from earlier and that's all working. Just to recap, we have set custom DNS in a virtual network and ensured that all the connected devices have reflected the changes. And we've also set up the DNS forwarders in a domain to Azure's DNS as per best practice. Some of what we've covered today is included in the AZ104 Microsoft Azure Administrator exam under the configure and manage virtual networking section, which you know can get you about 20% of your exam on its own once you get comfortable with all the different aspects of the networking side of Azure. So make sure you play around with that. So if you have any questions, which is always expected with DNS, then feel free to drop them in the comments below. Other than that, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Boom. <laughs> Not troll this time.